So staying true to my word, two weeks in and I have not touched the suspension and I have not put larger tires on this Jeep and I don't plan to for a while, but I have been very busy doing some very cool upgrades over the last two weeks. And today in this video, I'm gonna show you what we've done. This is turning out to be a really awesome build. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I wanna to give you an update on what we've been doing to the Jeep Wrangler diesel over the last two weeks because it's been fast and furious because I've got a couple trips coming right up that I'm super excited for. In just about 72 hours, I'm leaving for Utah for a big E3 Overland event, and then I'm gonna be going down to Baja, and then I gotta go back to Utah, and then we're gonna kick off the 50 state trips and that's gonna be over the next two years and I cannot wait for that. And so this vehicle is being built up for that purpose. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I've done to this that you're gonna see if you've been following the channel for a while, that's a little bit of a blend from when I built the Jeep Wrangler JK and the Jeep Gladiator because there's just a lot of stuff that I really worked out and I liked and so those are on here, but there's also a lot of new stuff that I never did to either one of those vehicles. And so we'll talk a little bit about what I've done and what I'm getting ready to do. Now, before we start talking about all those upgrades, just a reminder, the first thing you should do in any off-road vehicle is get a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, and a recovery gear. Those are a must in every vehicle. Now, let's get up to the front and I'll start talking about what I've done so far. All right, now on the front of the Wrangler, I still kept the Mopar steel bumper, and I like these bumpers, and I really like that you can take the end caps off, which I did, and surprisingly, it's over like 15 pounds of weight when you pull those things off, but I like the aggressive look, and it gives you more tire clearance. But look, I like this bumper, but I do think down the road, this may get an aluminum bumper up front, uh, just to shave a little bit of weight. You know, when you throw a winch plate and a winch up here and lights, it gets a little heavy. Speaking of winch plate. So I have installed a winch on my wife's two-door JL, on the Gladiator, and now on this one. And I realized when I was installing this that I've actually installed three different types of winch plates. So we did the Mopar one on my wife's Jeep. We did the, I think it's the Rugged Ridge on my Gladiator. And this one is the one from Hard Rock 4x4. And I didn't do a video on this one. I did one on the past uh, on my wife's Jeep. I'll leave a link down below. But when I installed this one, I wasn't a big fan of it because this plate actually bolts to the bumper and then you put the whole thing on and then it bolts up. Whereas on the other two plates, those ones get mounted in beside the frame rail and then you can put the bumper on. So I actually prefer the other two over this one. Now, speaking of winch, this is the first time that I've ever bought a worn winch. I've been running Smitty Belt for a long time just because those are a little more budget friendly and they've worked. But this is the new worn Evo VR10S. And the price point on this is very reasonable. It's not as much as the Warren Xeon is, and it's a little more expensive than the Smitty Built, but it does have the Warren name behind it, and so I think this is gonna work well, especially since I'm gonna be running stock suspension and tires for a while. I'm gonna need a good winch, I think. Um, so there's that. And up front, I'm using the Factor 55 Flat Link. It's a great product. I've been using this for years. And then, of course, you know I'm a big fan of Casey Highlights, and so I put two Pro 6 up here in a wide beam pattern, and that's just because I'm not bombing through the desert. I don't need a spotlight that shines way down. I just want to see up and close. And so those are going to work out really well for me. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about the roof rack. Okay, up top on the roof here, we have the Rhino Rack backbone system with the platform. And I went over to my good friends, Rhino Adventure Gear. They are literally 10 minutes from my house and they helped me do this install. Now I have installed this rack on my JK several years ago and you gotta drill the top and it's a lot of work. It's an easy do it yourself, but it is definitely time consuming. But look, those guys are good friends of mine. They're just up the street. They do this stuff day in and day out. They've got all kinds of roof racks, bed racks, rooftop tents, and having them help me out to drill the holes into my painted top, well, 
It was nice to have those guys do it, and they did a great job. Now, the Rhino Rack system, it really is three big components. You've got the internal structure, which is the backbone of it, that gets installed inside the hardtop, and that's where you get the support for everything. And then you have these feet on the outside, and that's where the drilling comes in. You've got to drill through the top to bolt these up into the backbone system, and then there's a foot up here. And then you have the plate system, which goes on top. And this is an awesome system. There's lots of room for storage up here. But a couple things, and if you guys have watched the channel for a while, you know that I've reviewed this before, and I made some recommendations that I didn't necessarily follow myself, but I will explain here for starters is the legs. So when I bought the Wrangler, I initially put the short legs on it, and it was very frustrating because I had to take my tent on and off all the time to get my vehicle in the garage, and you don't have a whole lot of room underneath here. And so when I got this one, it came with the, the tall legs with the quick releases, and those are very nice, but they stand about two inches taller than this, and it actually, aesthetically, I, it just didn't look right to me. It just looks so off. Uh, you had a lot more room to get access to underneath to bolt stuff on, but it just wasn't for me. So I am compromising by one, not having the quick release, and two, having a little less room to work underneath here and going with the shorter legs. And so that's what I've installed here. The other thing is I've mentioned that if all you're going to do is run a rooftop tent, you don't necessarily need the platform. You can just get the crossbar but there's not gonna be a tent up here full time. I'm actually gonna put some other accessories up on here and carry some storage. And I may even, like I said, from time to time, throw a regular tent or swag and I can just strap that right up to the platform up here. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out and I think this is gonna be super functional and a big thanks to my friends over at Rhino Adventure Gear for helping me out with this install. I really appreciate their support. Okay. Let's hop into the interior because that's pretty much it for the outside of the Jeep. I haven't done a whole lot more on the outside, but man, we've been busy working on the inside. All right, just a few things up front to talk about real quick. And you'll see, again, some familiar things here. I've got the 67 Designs rail mount up here. Uh, I love the phone holder. I've got my iPad mini mounted up here, and this is using a RAM mount on the 67 Designs arm. A lot of people have asked, Brad, why don't you just use Apple CarPlay for your navigation? It's, I've tried that, and for me, I just prefer to have the iPad mini and have everything separate. Plus, it's easy for me just to jump between different apps, and, uh, and I just like the way it works. And then I can keep my radio as my radio, and I can throw that off-road pages up there if I want to. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Then over here, I have my Garmin inReach. Uh, I love having the Garmin inReach because it's got that SOS feature, and it's Bluetooth to my phone, and my wife can text me if she needs to get a hold of me. Uh, I don't give that number out to anybody else. It's pretty much just so she can get a hold of me. Uh, but it's on a 67 Designs mount here, but what's attached is a Carolina Metal Masters little ball that screws right into the grab handle. Uh, it's a great feature, and look, that thing is super, super sturdy. Uh, well, the other thing I did up here, I did add the Mopar headliners. Uh, I'm not so impressed with the Mopar headliners. They're a little flimsy, and they, this one's you cannot like put like you know the patches up there that everybody likes to do. It's like an overland thing, right? You got to put patches up on your roof. You can't do that with these. Uh, the other thing we're going to talk about is comms. Now, this could be its whole entire video where we talk about comms, so maybe we'll do that in the future. But let me just talk a little bit about what I've done and the big change that we're doing here. So. I have installed the Midland Micro Mini GMRS radio, and I am converting over to GMRS. So are a lot of my other friends, because the great thing about GMRS is it's more easily accessible for people. You don't have to go get your ham license. I do have my ham license. I got it several years ago. I love the capability of ham, but it is more complex, and it's a little more than the average person needs. For me, I just need to be able to talk to you know the people in my convoy. I'm not trying to reach out and talk to people states away from me. So GMRS has the convenience of the CB radio, you know, the simplicity of a CB radio, but with a lot more capability and range. And so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, now I am still going to carry a ham handheld radio and I will always have a CB radio just in case. Um, but I think I'm primarily going to stick with GMRS. Now, will I install a ham radio in here later? Maybe just to have that capability, but I think GMRS is going to be perfect. Um, so that's going to work well for me for now, but we'll talk communications more later. All right. A lot has happened behind me. Let's take a look at that stuff. 
Now, where a big transformation has happened is back here with this whole storage system. So let me start with some of the small little details and then we'll work our way up to the big system here. Now up top here, I have an LED strip light. So when I roll up to camp at night, I can easily see everything back here on the table, in the fridge, it makes things really nice. Marco and I did a video on how to make your own little LED light strip system. Uh, I'll leave a link down below, you can go check out that video. That's super nice to have, very convenient. And then over here on the tailgate, I have the Outback Adventures products tailgate, and I love this. I have had this for, not this specific one, but I've had their table system for a long time, and I really like that. Also, I have a full video on how to install that, super easy, uh, great product. Uh, okay. And now back here where things have gotten really interesting. Let's start with the plate system. So this is the Goose Gear platform plate system. It's a really nice durable stuff. It's linexed. There's lots of little places to bolt things down. You've got some cubbies for storage and I opted for the 60% rear seat delete. Now, it took me a little minute to think about this. Do I really want to pull that back seat out of there? But I don't have small kids. I rarely have passengers in the back. And so I took that out and put that extra plate system and it's amazing how much more storage you get by doing that. Now, the other cool thing, and I didn't realize this, is just how easy it is to pull that plate system out and put the new, the old seat back in. I could probably do it within an hour. So if I need that seat for whatever reason, I can swap that back. Easy to do, but I love having all that extra storage back there. I mean, look, I got camera gear and a bunch of other stuff that's gonna be perfect for me. Then up here, we've got two really cool cabinets. So we've got this drawer system, which has got kind of a medium sized drawer on the top and a really large deep drawer uh, on the bottom. And then we have their ice box system, which has a small drawer on top. And then the I have a 45 liter Dometic fridge on the slider. And this is so perfect. Uh, and I gotta tell you, the quality of the Goose Gear stuff is awesome. I went up to their place up in Huntington Beach. I got an opportunity to see how things were made, just kind of check out their facility. I love checking out that kind of stuff and seeing how things come together. And those guys helped me install this whole system that went together very fast. I mean, they made quick work of installing this. Had to pull a lot of gear out of the Jeep to get this installed, but once it's in there, it's so clean and it looks really good. Uh, the Drawers are really nice. This is solid plywood up in here. The latches on here are top notch. I mean, uh, those are some good quality latches. And then there's places up on here that we've added so I can strap some bags down so you could get like some soft boxes or some bags or something up here. So the other thing that I like about this kit is I've still got plenty of visibility right outside the back window. Perfect. Now Marco and I, uh, built uh, a drawer system for my JK several years ago. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of man hours. There were many late nights and long weekends building that thing. And actually the materials to build that was really expensive. And so I wasn't really interested in doing another do-it-yourself project. I think the Goose Gear product is a great solution. This stuff is such good quality. It's the fit and finish is awesome. And uh, I'm excited to start putting my camping gear in here uh, because I got to leave here in about three days. Maybe what we'll do is after I get back from a couple of these trips, I'll pull everything out and you can see how I outfitted all this stuff in here, where I mounted stuff in the back, what I decided to put inside those little cubbies. I'm excited to put this all together. All right, let's talk about what some of the immediate future plans are for the Wrangler. All right, now I know that seems like I've done a lot of stuff in two weeks, and I have, but you gotta remember, I ordered this Jeep 11 weeks before it arrived, so I knew what I wanted to do, and I had all that time to think about it. I had a pretty long Excel spreadsheet running on everything that I wanted to get. I started ordering stuff kind of right away. Now, what is the plan for this going forward? Well, first and foremost, I mentioned we're gonna be hitting some trails and going on some adventures because that's what this thing is for. Uh, it's time to get out of the garage and go explore. Um, now, I'm gonna be doing that E3 Overland event. Uh, then we're gonna be going down to Baja. I've gotta to go to Utah for a project. And then we're gonna start kicking off the 50 state adventure. And I'll just tell you on top of the list is Texas. So hopefully you'll see me out in Texas here pretty soon. Now, what other upgrades are still left to do. Well, there's a lot, but in the immediate future, I've got to sort out air compressor. Uh, I love the air compressor install that we did on my wife's Jeep, but that's not a diesel, and that one does not work uh, with the diesel. So I've got to figure something else out. Maybe I'll have to use one of these little cubbies in the goose gear to install it. Maybe I'll figure something else out, but I've got to get onboard air for this thing. 
Also, I've got an aluminum skid plate that's coming. I ordered that a couple weeks ago. It still hasn't arrived. I was hoping it would be here before this trip, but that's okay. Uh, when it does get here, I'm gonna bring you guys in the garage and we'll install that together because that's not a video I've done in the past and I think it'll be a cool install just to see how that all goes together because it's a full belly skid that goes all the way back and it's actually gonna cover uh, that Def tank in the rear for the diesel, which is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, I also have a Red Arc brake controller that's gonna be going on in this Jeep. Uh, that is gonna be very important to have because we are gonna be doing some more towing uh, and having a brake controller when you are off-roading can really help you manipulate some stuff and we'll talk about that more uh, once we start doing some towing and get that installed, so that'll be pretty cool. And then I'm gonna do some rock lights as well because uh, I like having like the KC Cyclones under there because when you roll up at camp, having some ground light, not so much for the rock crawling, but having the ground light when you're out in the middle of the desert and there's creepy crawlers on the ground, it's nice to see what's going on down there, so I will be doing that. So those are the things that are coming up here in the near future. Uh, and we'll worry about, you know, tire suspension and all that stuff. We'll worry about that down the road. We're gonna get out and wheel this thing and have a great time. I hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out and seeing all the stuff that uh, we've done to this Jeep, and I hope you join us for these upcoming adventures. Thanks for watching.